on this morning. Congregation, would you stand and welcome the Reverend Jackie Marshall. Good morning. Amen. 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 Is God good? Amen. Has he been good to you? Amen. Praise the Lord. So I just wanted to start by saying how grateful I am for God's blessing, mercy, grace, love, forgiveness, um, peace, joy, long suffering with me in moments that I am not perfect, that I fall way short below what he calls me to do. Does anybody understand that? Okay. All right. Good. So I'm in the right place, eh? All right. So let us pray. Father God, we thank you this day that you have given us life. We thank you, even as we celebrate your coming over 2,000 years ago, we thank you, Lord, that we are here and we can call on you. We need not go to a priest, because when you came, you became our priest. So we can come directly to the throne of heaven to ask for forgiveness. Thank you for coming. And as we celebrate your coming this day, please let us be mindful of why you came and that you're coming again. Cover this message, Lord, and let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Let the ground be fertile for your word this day. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 So, um, I'd like to just start by thanking Bishop Michael. And then have my PowerPoint is coming up. Thank you, Bishop Michael. Holy Spirit, um, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, brethren, um, Reverend Edwards, and all the ministers in their respective places, the deaconesses and the elders, etc. I praise God for this opportunity to be here before you this day, knowing that every time God allows us to take a platform, he has a purpose, and it's not to gratify ourselves. Amen? There is something that needs to be said. And I was looking around, and I was, when the Lord gave me the word, I was like, well, Lord, who is this for? It's always for you first, Right? So I took it and I said, Lord, it's for me first, so let me run with the word. So um, I just wanted to speak with you a little bit today about um, the topic, um, two paths, two gates, and one choice. So two paths, two gates, but one choice. We have the PowerPoint? Oh, they're coming. All right. So two paths, two gates, and one choice. If you stay there for a second, you'll notice that one path, it's very easy and smooth, it's wide, there are no hills and valleys. And you notice the part on the right has a steep upturn, right? So this is indicative of the walk that we choose if we choose Jesus on the right and the walk that we choose if we choose the world on the left, okay? So just remember the two paths that will lead to two gates but you have one choice. Next slide, please. So when we look at the modern definition of what a path is, okay? So it says a path is a life, it's conduct, it's thought, it's how we um, set a program to work like a computer file. It is a way that people walk and they beat or after they've walked on it for a certain amount of time, the grass kind of gets beaten down. And it's also a route or a track from between one direction to the next. Next slide, please. When we look at the modern definition of a gate, a gate could be an entrance, it could be an exit, so it lets you into a place. And when we think of biology, in the cell membranes, it allows certain things to go through and then it blocks others. So that's a gate. Next slide, please. When we think of the biblical meaning of gate, the Bible talks about several definitions for a gate. So it talks about authority. In, in Psalms and Proverbs, there's a lot about the elders sitting at the gates of authority. They communicate to people communicated to people at the gate right and also councils and judges they administer justice at the gate so in the bible the gate is a very important place where certain affairs are handled and certain things are done right so next slide please so what is the choice remember two paths two gates one choice so what is a choice if you look at this gentleman in the photo you'll notice he's standing there and he has five doors one two three four five six doors from which to choose that's you and i as we stand every day to look at what door we're going to open and what door we're going to choose and if you notice i highlighted two words on this slide it is an act 
but there's also the power of making that choice. Every day that we wake up, we have the power and the ability. God has given us that. And someone says, well, why did God give us free will if he knew we was going to sin? Because if he didn't give it to us, then he wouldn't have given us the option of choosing him because he wanted us to choose him out of love, not out of, um, um, how would you say, obligation, right? He wanted us to want him and want relationship with him. So the choice that you and I make is an act, but it's also the power that's given to me to choose. Next slide, please. So when we think about the path in the Bible, uh, there are very scri many scriptures there, but for time I won't go through them. But it talks about the lot, that what's been given to me in life, my lot in life, my career, right? What career path are you going to take? What destiny? Where do you want to go in life? It talks about your conduct or your purpose in life. Like what have you purposed to do, right? And it also talks about being upright and it speaks about justice. So you get the idea that the world's definition of path is a little different from what the, what the Bible says, right? It's more about my character, how um, I live my life according to God's will, that sort of thing. Next slide, please. So what is the significance of the number two? Remember, two paths, two gates. Come with me, I don't preach alone. Two paths, two one purpose. Thank you. I want you to stay awake. Stay awake. All right. We're not going to be here long. So the number two talks about dualities. That means there are two sides. So me, you, male, female, yes, no, alive, dead, left, right, true, false, good, bad, right? God, the devil. So we grow up hearing about dualities too. There's always a opposite to whatever that is that we're looking at. Amen. You with me so far? Okay, perfect. Next slide, please. So, in the Bible, what does two mean? And the Bible talks about two, Jesus sent his disciples out two by two. And even when someone was brought forward to be judged, there had to be a second person as a witness, right? So the number two is very significant in the Bible. The Bible says two are better than one. And we also talk about two becoming one. So the number two is very significant even in the Bible. Next slide, please. So, when we talk about love and hate, now, don't pretend that you're so holy that you don't know who Dennis Brown is. So, Dennis Brown says, love and hate can never be friends, right? We're not going to sing this song, but yes. Um, and he says, here I come with love and not hatred. Okay, surely goodness and mercy. So, he talks about the opposites. I know the musicians know the song too, right? Amen. All right. Yes, pastor, they're still saved. Don't worry. Um, so, yes. So love and hate are, the, are opposing each other. They will never be alike. They will never be friends. Love does not like hate and hate does not like love. Okay? Two paths, two gates, one choice. Next slide, please. So as we think about the relationship between all three now, the path, the gate, and the choice, you notice this person standing at the opening of a maze. Think of this as life. They have a decision to make, just as the gentleman did with all six doors. Are they going to go in or are they going to stay on the outside? Because let me explain something to you. It's not that you don't make the choice. You do. Because not to choose is to choose, right? And if you listen to the scripture this morning that was read, thank you, Deacon, that read it for us, you make that choice. And Paul talked about the thing that I don't want to do, that the thing, that's the thing I do do. So you make a choice. So when you enter, that's your choice. I actually make an act of entering into whatever I want to enter for the day, what I want to do or what I don't want to do. It talks about the narrow gate, right? And the narrow gate goes to heaven, okay? The wide road that you saw on the first slide leads to hell, okay? And the Bible says the gate is wide. For many will go there because, of course, we don't want to go up that steep track. We want the wide road that is nice and open because it's easy to get on that road. Next slide, please. So as we go forth, let's think about the natural. In the natural, if I were to hand you two coins, can you see both sides at the same time? No. So what the enemy does with us is he hands us a coin, and at the top of the coin is very shiny and beautiful. Amen? And the enemy is saying, this is what you'll get. Remember, he tempted Jesus when Jesus came out of the wilderness. So if the devil will tempt the Son of God, do you think you and I are any match for him on our own? absolutely not so he hands us these two coins but if you read this slide look at what it says life is like a coin pleasure and pain so that means pleasure may be on top the enemy's handing that to you and I but he's not telling you about the pain that's going to accompany that coin because once I take the coin I take 
both sides of the coin. So only one side is visible, but here's, here's the kicker, that very last sentence. But remember, the other side is waiting for its turn. So once I take the coin, I take um, both sides. Next slides, please. So when we think about the natural again, the Bible in Proverbs, if you've never read the book of Proverbs, take some time to read it. It talks about wisdom and folly. And you know what's so interesting about these two women? Both of them are standing in the high places. Both of them are calling out to people. So think about when we see something and the enemy sends a decoy or a counterfeit. The counterfeit looks so much like the real thing, except we are covered with the Holy Spirit, we won't know. And in, in, the, um, in the scripture, both are saying, come. And the Bible says they're speaking to people that have no sense. So both wisdom and folly are speaking to people that have no sense. But wisdom, listen to what wisdom is saying. Come and eat with me and drink my wine and you would live. But listen to what folly is saying. Stolen waters are, be are sweet and food eaten in secret is delicious. So wisdom is saying, live with me. But folly is not telling you about what your end will be. She's just telling you that that relationship that you're having that's inappropriate is sweet. That thing that you're watching that is tearing your soul apart is good for you. But the Bible says those that stay with her don't realize that they're going down to death. Amen. So going to the next slide, please. When we think about the natural and the physical, the church and the world, let's, let's do the, the comparisons here. We know God in the church. The world does not. They know of God. So I have so many people, even in my family, that says, yeah, man, God is good, man. God is good. Yeah, man, God bless me today. God bless me. Have you dedicated your life to Jesus? No. Do you, do you, do you think you should get baptized? No, I don't need to get baptized, you know. Remember the thief on the cross didn't get baptized. So I don't need to get baptized. I can just go to church and love the Lord and God loves me. And let me tell you, some people that haven't dedicated their life to the Lord, they know the Bible more than you and I, who's grown up in the church. They can quote every scripture. But guess what? The devil knows the Bible as well. So until you dedicate, you have no relationship, which means you have no access. Until you dedicate, you're not reconciled to him. You are rebellious. Stop fooling yourself, you and I. If I have not dedicated my life to him, I'm rebellious, I'm guilty. And until the blood of Jesus comes in and takes away that guilt and sin, I am under the wrath of God. Amen. So we're talking about him coming in today in Palm Sunday. Yes, he came in. But as Bishop said, a week later, the same people said, crucify him. So when he comes back, do you really think he's going to come back on a donkey and like a baby? No, he won't. He'll be coming back as a righteous judge for you to judge you and I. Next slide, please. So the opposing forces, the flesh and the spirit, and the Bible says they're constantly warring one against the other. Like Dennis Brown said, love and hate will never be friend. The flesh and the spirit will never be friend. So if you find yourself doing a lot of fleshly things and being comfortable, the spirit of the Lord is not residing with you. Me. It's not. Because they are mortal enemies. They have never liked one another. Amen. Next slide. When we think about um, Newton's first third law, okay, we're going to do a little bit of physics here. Don't worry. No tests no exams but when we think about Newton's third law what did Newton's third law say he says for every action there is an equal but it's an opposing it's an opposite reaction that's what he says so in every interaction between two objects there are a pair of opposing forces acting on each other at the same time so every day you go out as a child of God the enemy is acting against you there are hidden forces spiritual wickedness in high places that are acting against you that you can't even see amen and when you have given your life over to the devil the Lord is trying to get to you, is calling out to you, but those forces are blocking your ears, your eyes, your heart from accepting Jesus. Next slide, please. So we have a little demonstration here. I hope we can play it for a couple of minutes. And this is ex explaining how Newton's third law works, basically. And these are NASA scientists in space. And the demonstration shows you a little bit about how when the two forces come together and they push, what happens? I don't know if we're able to play that. If not, you can just go, thank you. Just go to that slide. So I showed them, you can go to the next slide if you can't play it. 
Yeah, that's, I did some screenshots. So basically, the, both force, both um, body masses are the same in these two gentlemen. They're both astronauts. But when the gentleman pushes the other, you can see they both go apart, but they're both pushing apart okay the same amount of force that's just you and me in the natural trying to push the devil away hello i try to push the devil he's going to push me back i'm going to get knocked over i have no power i don't i haven't been cleansed by the holy spirit i haven't dedicated my life to jesus next slide please so what do we need <laughs> what do we need we're going to go back a little bit for those of you who remember the lion king do you remember when simba nala and who was the other what was the name of the bird you're young enough. Zazu, thank you. Thank you. So Simba, Nala, and Zazu were being disobedient and they went over to the Pride Lands. Was it called the Pride Lands? Thank you, my dear. Thank you. And they have been told not to go there, but they went there anyway. And who did they meet? The hyenas. And when they met the hyenas, do you remember the story? Did you see the Lion King? Lovely. Okay. So when they went there and they saw the hyenas, the hyenas saw them coming and they're thinking, lunch, right? And of course, little Simba let out this roar. Remember? Arr! And the hyenas laughed and their belly was full. They were cracking up. Like, little kid, we're going to eat you for breakfast. You're going to be a nice little, you know, starter for my meal. And as they were about to go attack them, who showed up? <laughs> Daddy showed up. You remember that? Do you all remember that? And when Mufasa showed up right when the daddy showed up and he roared oh <laughs> the hyena says what what was that so in the clip below when i before when i'm trying to push against the enemy on my own i have no power i have no power but when daddy shows up behind me when I got the Holy Spirit to show up behind me and when I put my little paw forward and when daddy's roar comes and his paw comes on my paw, that's when I get the power to do what God has sent me to do. That's when the enemy has to flee. Hallelujah. So if you're facing the world on your own because you think because you read a scripture here and there, you come to church, you serve on the usher board, you sing on the praise team, you play the music, you preach and you do not have the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit, one of these days when you push your enemy, he's going to push back really hard. And he's going to send you somewhere that only the grace of God can save you from. It's serious, people of God. Many of us have been coming to church for years and hearing the word, and we're still playing one foot in, one foot out. And we keep doing this with Jesus. No, it's not a game. It's not a game. Look at the world that we're in now. What's happening in the world? You will have to make a choice. Next slide, please. So, when we think about where I am, the Bible said Moses chose to suffer. He chose to suffer with his people. We know the story. His mom put him, Herod was killing all the babies. Pharaoh was killing all the babies. His mom put him in a little basket. His sister watched him. Pharaoh's sister went, saw the baby, picked the baby up. Moses was raised in, raised in Egypt as an Egyptian. He didn't know his heritage. But what do you think happened one day when he saw an Egyptian um, taskmaster beating a Hebrew? Something rose up inside of him. And the Bible said he killed. And the minute he did that, his life changed. He could no longer be an Egyptian prince. But even so, they might have forgiven Moses, but something inside him said, this is not where I belong. I wasn't created to be here in Egypt living. Look at the prince. He is gorgeous. I mean, nice facials. He gets manicures and all of that. But what did God call Moses to do? God called Moses to be out there in the wilderness with his people. So Moses made a choice and he left. He left to be in the wilderness to go lead his people. What are we willing to lead today? The comforts of our lives amen next slide please so when we think about the past i'm um two paths two gates two paths two gates to one choice so the pleasures of sin what am i going to choose today there's a choice that you must make because if you think not making a choice is not making a choice not making a choice is making a choice and please when you get a chance go back and read romans 7 15 through 25. The, the king james version is a little hard to understand but you can read the new living translation and see what paul who knew jesus was talking about he struggled in his flesh to live a godly life hello someone amen amen we didn't come out of the womb and pop out saying hallelujah and speaking in tongues no 
it doesn't matter and some of us who have been saved and born and raised in the church some of us are the worst because we're very judgmental amen the bible says the last shall be first so the prostitute that comes in may very well be passing me on judgment day going into heaven and i'm standing there saying lord didn't i preach in your name didn't i heal in your name and he will say depart from me because i never knew you i never had a relationship with you you talked about me and you name dropped me right amen so pleasures of sin addictive destructive satisfies my flesh satisfies the culture we don't want to say there was a guy on youtube one of the um congressmen and he stood up and he says i am not conforming to your madness i will not call a he or she and he got so many likes because he had the nerve to say this is crazy how many of us are willing to say that because we don't want to be blacklisted but the culture has now have you really looked at what's happening in the world today what's allowed what's okay what we as Christians are even afraid to say anything about. So to be a harlot for the word, and that's a harsh word, but that's exactly what the Lord calls us when we're out there. Letting the devil pimp us in sin and doing things that we shouldn't do, right? Or risking being eternally separated from God. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Whatever you're doing, whatever I'm doing, amen? Otherwise, seeking heaven, being fulfilled, being rewarded, being filled with the Holy Spirit, having the church as a body surround me having freedom being the bride of christ think about how he talks about his bride oh my goodness why would you want to be a harlot for the world when you can be a bride for jesus amen and have eternal connections to jesus next slide please so there's a gentleman on youtube called johnny chang he's a youtube personality at 12 years old he was initiated into a gang he wanted to be a part of a gang because he wanted togetherness and fellowship and many of our young men and young women go into gangs and go into poor relationships because they're seeking um, paternal figures or maternal figures or connection and love if anybody here has gone through that you know exactly what i'm talking about yeah you there's something you need and guess where that is it's in jesus that's where it is these relationships and all that but anyway he went on and he says one day he realized that he kept believing the devil's deceptive tactics and he said one of the things the devil kept saying to him is you're not good enough you will always be this person you're born to be a thug you're born to be a killer some of the things he's done he says he can't even talk about and he says one day he threw his all his drug paraphernalia into the rubbish and two minutes later he was digging it out again and he looked at himself in the mirror and says what is going on here and he says i chose one day someone ministered to him about jesus and he says i chose to believe the lies of the devil so he says am i going to trust the, the lies the one that lies to me or am i going to trust the one that died for me he says what am i going to do i have a choice to make amen so he turned his life around if you get a chance you could listen to him on youtube powerful testimony of what the blood of jesus can do but he made the choice he made the choice amen next slide please so as we think about the consequences of wrong choices this is a quote by a minister that lived from 1922 i think to about 2002 and he was um, the one that started the men's ministry a men's ministry and he says the pleasures of sin exist let's not fool ourselves and deny ourselves about that but we also dare not deny what follows in the wake a voracious appetite inflamed with eroticism demanding more indulgence and more often until a degenerative spiral captures my soul and drags me on a never-ending descent into deeper patterns of immorality illicit and illicit behavior lust goes beyond the sexual lust can show itself in a variety of forms covetousness gluttony drunkenness power hunger or unbridled ambition to name a few that is powerful and can i identify with any of those that i had to ask the lord to deliver me from because i chose to make the wrong choice next slide please so as we think about it today there's a a, a very popular theology out there a lot of it is new age about finding your own path we are all gods god wants you to be happy manifest it have you heard how many churches are talking about what well, you're manifesting please tell me what you're manifesting did the lord tell you that you can manifest that what does it mean to be manifesting what does the scripture say about manifesting what does god say 
Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not onto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Now if you're manifesting something the Lord told you, that's different. But is that the way the world is getting it? There's a popular song by this African guy, um, Victor Thompson. Everything that I've wanted, everything that I've wanted manifested in my life. Everything that I've wanted, and you should see the amount of hits on YouTube. Have you guys seen it? And I mean, the rhythm is tight. (laughs) I'm not going to lie. The rhythm is good, right? Woo! Because somebody said it to me, and I'm dancing, and the Holy Spirit's like, Jackie, check the lyrics. And when I listen, everything that I've wanted, not, not everything that the Lord said manifested in, we have to be careful about finding our own path. We are lost We are undone, we are foolish, we are unwise. Amen? Next slide, please. So here we go. As it was in the beginning, when the enemy came and he tempted Eve, so shall it be in the end. Nothing's changed. The enemy has no, Ecclesiastes said there's nothing new under the sun, yeah? So the enemy has no new tactics. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. He uses the same things to tempt us now that he used years ago. You and I, every one of us are susceptible. Until the, lay the, until the day the Lord calls us home, as long as you're living in this body, you will be tempted. And there are times that you may not pass the test. But that's why we have an advocate called Jesus. So that when we do fail, we can go to him and kneel and say, I am so sorry, daddy. I want to get back right with you. I don't want to be here. Amen. As it was in the beginning so shall it be in the end nothing has changed next slide please so you have a choice jesus said i am the gate i am the gate whoever enters through me so all these religions that are talking about you can steve harvey i was so disappointed oh there's got to be more than one way to jesus steve really is it because you're popular now you forgot that Jesus, and that's okay, I'll call his name because it's the truth. We need to call out some of these false teachings and not be afraid, amen? And he was somewhere, I think in India somewhere, and saying that there are many ways to, 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 to God. No, there isn't. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh, but, cometh unto the Father but by me. There's one way. There's one way, and it's only Jesus. It's only Jesus. Next slide, please. So, do not trade your eternity, your soul, which we are body, mind, spirit, soul. Your soul just dwells in here. You can't see it, but it's there. It's connected to God. It is eternal. It will never die. Please don't trade your eternity for a few moments of pleasure here on earth. Your time on earth is about this much of your existence. Please, you and I, don't trade it. Next slide, please. Next slide. So today, if you remember in the Matrix, and I love movie analogies because so much that happens in the movies are spiritual. If you notice, if you really look at some of these films, you can pull out some spiritual themes, right? And do you remember when Neo was handed the choice? How many saw the Matrix? Matrix? Okay, all right. So the Matrix, you remember when Neo was handed the two pills by, um, what's his name again? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You remember, Lawrence handed him and he said, that wasn't his name in the movie, but I can't remember his name. Morpheus. Thank you. Morpheus handed, handed him the two pills. He says, pick one, Neo. You have to pick because he had to make a choice. Amen. It wasn't like he could say, I'm not going to make a choice. So today, you are faced with two choices, but you can only make one. Choose wisely. Because the choice that you and I make will determine where we end up in eternity. There will be no get out clause on judgment day. There will be no lawyers to defend you and I on judgment day. My grandmother would say every pot has to sit on its own bottom. That means on judgment day you and I will stand and we will give an account. So please, the Bible says if today you hear my voice, harden not your heart. I don't know why the Lord had me bring this message today, but he wanted to remind us that he came in on Palm Sunday, but when he returns, he will not be returning on a donkey. You won't be hearing Hosanna in the highest. He's returning as a judge to judge me, to judge you. And once you are old enough to make the decision to choose him, choose wisely. God bless you. Thank you.